Hello Live Wires, Heather Boyd Wire here and today it's Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to show you 10 things you can do with the Beadsmith 6-step looping pliers. What you're going to need for this project are the 6-step pliers. I'll link them in the description below. You're also going to need your flat pliers, round nose pliers, flush cutters, and I have double flush cutters from Zuron. I'll also link up all these tools below. I'm using 18 gauge wire and 20 gauge wire. This is the tarnish resistant silver from Artistic Wire and I'm using stainless steel 22 gauge wire to make some earring hooks. So the sizes of the loops that you can get from this tool are 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 7 millimeter and 9 millimeter. I'm going to start by doing simple jump rings. So I'll use the 5 millimeter size and you're just going to put your wire in there and turn it around. Just around and around to make a bunch of 5 millimeter jump rings. So it's very easy to do. Just kind of flick your wrist around, push it around and then once you have that you're going to use your cutters. I have these double flush cutters from Zuron and so what you'll do is just start with this end and go up and just keep working your way up. If you don't have double flush cutters use your regular flush cutters and just make sure that you put them in the right direction so that the cuts will line up. So we're just going to go like that so that one is flush and then we're going to just turn our flush cutters so this will also be flush. Give it a little cut and then the same thing just turn it so the flush part is on that side and just do the cut like that. So then both sides will be cut flush and if you have a jewelry saw the ideal thing is to get a jewelry saw and cut them flush like that. So there are your jump rings and they're all the same size. To make the hearts you can do a single one or two at the same time if you want to make earrings and you're just going to hold them together and then bend this one at an angle. You can use about four to six inches depending on how big you want to make your hearts. So just bend them so they're the same. From there get your looping pliers and we can do it at the seven millimeter uh, size and just hold that in the place that you want your loop to be and bring it around. Just bring it so it's straight down there and then hold them together again. Flip it around. Make sure these points stay lined up and then put it back in position. Make sure they're about lined up. You can always do like little adjustments there. So there we have them the same size and then you can separate them to finish them. So to finish them I'll take the flat pliers and just bend these to the back. Push it with your thumbs so it's really sharp and then flip it. Hold them with your flat pliers and give this a band around. And then you're going to clip it and you want to pinch that in so these ends are going to stay in place. So give that a little pinch. Then you can take your needle nose pliers it's a little easier to access and bend them up. So it just bends up like that. From there you can add a little bead to stick it right on there. Cut this to 3 eighths to half an inch and then get your round nose pliers to form the loop. So to form the loop we're just going to pull it back and around to form your loop. So now you can add your earring hook just to open it up put the little heart on there, close it up and there you have your beautiful heart earrings that are exactly the same size. To make a spiral bale on the top of a wrapped stone just take about 12 to 15 inches of 20 gauge wire, bend it at a right angle and then use your bale pliers just to do a little loop like that, just a little curve to sit on the top of the glass and then you're going to place your sea glass in that little jog of the wire there and then just bend it around to the top 
I have other videos on how to wrap sea glass and stones. I'll link them up below. This is a very simple wrap. We just go around once and then just bring this one around a couple of times. You can add beads too if you like, however you want it to look. Around again and then we're going to bring it back up to the top and then just wrap it around. And if you want, if you have an extra wire, you can make a bit of a spiral at the top or you can keep it simple and just clip it. I like to tighten up these wires as well. You can use your looping pliers to do that. So we're just going to take them and just do little jogs in the wire just to tighten it up. Same thing here and here and then it just makes it look a little more fancy and kind of wavy. So now to do the bail at the top, you can just bend that out at an angle take your pliers and just go around a couple of times around and around so you can go around two or three times however many times that you want and you can either uh, clip it there if you like or if you want it more solid just hold it and then give it another little bend around just to be more secure and from there we're going to clip it and there you have your beautiful wrap glass with the coiled bale. For the infinity sign, take about two inches of 18 gauge wire. Make sure you cut it flush on the end and then use the five millimeter size and take this and just bring it around. You can make them bigger or smaller if you want, depending on what you're going to make. Go around the other side see that this line lines up and then you're going to take your flush cutters again and give it a little flush cut and from there you can just push it in place and you can always hammer this to harden it up so for the treble clefts i've got two pieces of 20 gauge wire about five to six inches and i'm going to start with the five millimeter size and just bend it up. From there we're going to measure it about the first two steps and then we're going to take the two millimeter size and just bend it down. And then we're going to flip over to the five millimeter size again and just bring it around and up. And just adjust it a little bit if you have to. From there we'll separate them and then go back to our five millimeter size and bring it around to do a full circle and then bring that so it's straight up. And then what I like to do is just wiggle this a bit one way and then the other way. So that's a little bit above there. And then go back to your two millimeter size, hold it in place. And this is the magic trick. We go abracadabra do in there and it's a treble clef. So from there, I like to make it more secure. So I usually just take this and bring it to the back and give it a little clip. So we'll give it a little flush cut in there and then take your flat pliers and just push it in. After that, you can put a bead in there if you want, or you can just go ahead and make a little loop. So just bring the two millimeter size again wind it around and again a little flush cut and press it in place. So now you just put on the earring hook, slide it on there, close it up and there you have your beautiful treble clef earrings made with the looping pliers. To make the coils to go on the leather cord you can use either the two or three millimeter size depending on your cord. Make sure the ends cut flush and then we're just going to go around and we'll just twist it around and around the end. You can make these any size you want. Usually about five or six loops should be good. So we're just going to go around like that. I'm going to do an extra loop because this one I want to be a looped end. So we're just going to remove it. I'll cut the end flush. And then usually 
what I do at that point is I just split them. I find it easier to do it that way. So don't cut through, but I use my flush cutters just to gently open it up like that. And then I take my flat pliers, chain nose pliers, and then just hold this and just push it gently in so it's centered. And that makes a lovely spring end. So if you just want the spring with no loop, just go around about six times and then cut it flush just at the back there. So you see how easy it is to make the spring and the spring end. So to do the bead links for bracelets and necklaces, you can just take your flush cutters and cut an 18 or 20 gauge piece of wire and then you're going to get the looping pliers. Use the two millimeter size, take the pliers and close up a loop like that. Flick of the wrist, just bring the pliers back and then bend that down. So you have the loop centered. Then you can get a six millimeter bead. You can also use an eight or a four millimeter bead, my favorite miracle beads. And from there, you're gonna cut another flush cut about three eighths to half an inch here. Give it a little clip. And then we'll get our looping pliers again, hold the wire at the end, and then hold this and bend it back and then flick of the wrist. Just turn this right around. So you have the loop that's closed up. And then to attach the loops together, just open it up by pushing it out to the side and then take the loops you've already made and then close it by pushing it to the side back. Just press it flat in there and then you have your little links of beads. So for the flower, I'm going to take about six inches of 20 gauge wire. You can also use 18 gauge wire. About an inch from the end, I'll take the looping pliers and at the three millimeter one, I'm going to bend it down and then I'm going to flip them and then bend it up. Just hold it like that and bend it up at the two millimeter one and then flip it again and then bend it down and flip them again and just keep going like this until I have five petals. It's a little finicky to get the pliers in and out, but with practice, you'll get the hang of it. So we just keep flipping them back and forth again, again, and one more time. We'll bring this one down. So from there, what we want to do is start to bring the petals in. So put your three millimeter loop in there and then just gradually kind of bring them around. This way the loops won't collapse and you'll just work your way around to close your circle. So we're going to go around here. And then from there, what we want to do is actually take this wire, bring it to the front, make sure they're both to the front and then bend this just at the end there. You're going to get your flat pliers and just bend this just at that intersection there. Get your round nose pliers and just where you want it to twist around, just hold it and just help it out with the round nose pliers. Lift it off, give it a little bit of a tug and from there we can get our flush cutters and just give it a little clip. Get your needle nose pliers and push it in. Get the round nose pliers and just bend it at a little bit of an angle. Add your bead on there. And just bring it to the opposite side and bend it around. Give it a little clip. Use your needle nose pliers just to give it a little flick of the wrist to close it up. And you see, you can do earrings with these. You can loop them together and make a bracelet. There's all kinds of things you can do. If you want to make clasps, you can just take your 18 gauge wire, make sure it's cut flush, 
take your two millimeter end and loop that around and then just flip it around and get your seven or your five millimeter size and then go around like that flip it again get the two millimeter and bring that one around and then you're going to clip it and you can use your flat pliers just to finish it off and then for the other end of the clasp just give it a flush cut again take your two millimeter loop bring that one around and then you could just wiggle that one around and bring it up like that and then use your seven millimeter size there's different ways to make these loops and clasps you can experiment with it you could even put beads in between if you want we'll give it a little flush cut and we'll just give it a little flatten there you can also hammer them to make them stronger and there you have your simple looped clasp to make the earring hooks you need a harder wire so i'm using surgical steel you can also use sterling but make sure it's half hard and this is 22 gauge wire i'm going to cut it to about an inch and a half so what i'm going to do is because i'm using memory wire cutters there's a bit of a gap so i'm going to hold my finger at one and five eighths inch and then when i cut it it's going to end up being about an inch and a half so give it a clip i'm just going to hold it so it doesn't fly you're going to need two pieces so you could do them both at the same time or separately you're going to need the two millimeter size and you're just going to hold the ends and bring them in if your wire is too stiff and you can't do them both at once just do them separately it's not a big deal so just close up those loops and close up that loop and then we're going to put them together again and put them back on the looping tool and at the seven millimeter size you're going to bring this in make sure they're on an angle because you want it to be a little distance from the loop and then just take this and bring it around now i would remove them especially if your wire is very stiff and then do them one at a time you've got the initial bend done so bring it in just bring it in like that and then you can flip this around and just bend that out on a slight angle so we're going to do the same thing with this side just put them back on the looping tool at the seven millimeter mark bend it in just close it up bend it in remove them and then give that a little bend out if you want the loop more closed just take your flat pliers and just pinch it in a little bit and you can do the same on the other side Keep in mind your ends are going to be a little sharp so use a reamer and just go ahead and round out the ends you can get these manual ones or you can get electric ones and there you have your super simple earring hooks that are exactly the same size so thanks so much for watching the video give it a big thumbs up if you liked it be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.